Thank you for tuning in to New Zealand's very own Fire School of Ministry. We are dedicated to seeing a national revival within the shores of New Zealand. For more information, find us on Facebook. Guys, and welcome back to our sessions on mystics, saints, and the lost art of contemplative prayer. And during this self-isolation around the world because of the coronavirus, we're going to be looking at the life of various mystics and saints throughout Christian history that have self-isolated themselves, gone into a sense of self-isolation and had profound impact through their writings and through their prayers uh, to others. And one of the ladies I want to look at today is somebody called Etty Hillesum. Etty was born in 1914 and she died in 1943. So she was born at the onset of World War I and she died during World War II as a young woman in her late 20s. She is from a Jewish background. Her mother was a Russian Jew. Her father was Jewish. Her mother was very um, psychologically unstable. She uh, was caused what Etty describes in her diaries as absolute chaos in in the family environment. The father was uh, very much an intellectual who kept very quiet um, and Etty drew a lot of strength from his creative writing and things like that and that's expressed in her diaries. Etty was uh, not particularly religious so it's kind of weird to be including her in the saints and the mystics um, of Christian history um, and I'm not trying to pull Etty into Christian history but but honestly she really did have some profound lessons to teach us. Etty uh, grew up in Holland in the Netherlands and so she was a Dutch Jew and in her early 20s on the onset of war in 1939 she was uh, studying at university and was living quite a promiscuous life not a particularly religious life um, she was sleeping around she was part a party girl and quite a gregarious vivacious character quite a free-thinking woman but still operating with a lot of the chaos that her mother passed on to her and she explored to try to find some peace she explored um, healing some of this chaos with a Jungian psychologist uh, who was a bit of a strange character. He actually ended up being one of Etty's lovers. And he helped her to find internal peace from the chaos that was in her mind, from a really poor upbringing. And this man helped her find internal peace that Etty, as she writes her diaries, she kind of goes from just finding her own peace to discovering that this internal well that is inside of her, this other side to her that she'd never seen before, she begins to name this internal peace as God. She calls this peace God and she begins to pray. She talks about really struggling to kneel in prayer. There's there's fantastic parts to her diary where there's this internal battle on the inside where she just doesn't want to um, bow before God privately but, but she finds this place to bow before God. All of this is happening to Etty and she records it quite fluidly and beautifully in her diaries which are available now. All of this happens with the backdrop of the occupation of the Netherlands by the Nazis. So Germany has declared war, 1939, and now the Nazi uh, movement is moving into the Netherlands. And as, as we know, history tells us, their primary group are the Jewish people that they want to persecute. Etty gets rounded up into a ghetto in Amsterdam and then from the ghetto she gets taken she actually volunteers to go to a place called Vesterbork and Vesterbork is inside of Dutch borders and it's the transit camp to Auschwitz 
It's where Hitler rounded up the Jews of the Netherlands into this horrible camp. It was a, a camp built by the Dutch government um, to house, I think, about a thousand people. And the Nazi party crammed in up to about 10,000 Jews and other people inside that camp. Etty was one of them, and she self volunteered to be a social worker to her own people. So as Etty is experiencing internal peace with God, she begins to have kind of a corporate sense of solidarity with her own people. And this is a real key to finding peace with God. Many times as we find that internal peace, we realize this isn't just about you and God, union with God, blissful relationship with God, but there needs to be an outward expression to others. And Etty self-volunteers into a camp full of lice, full of deprivation, full of human anxiety and trauma and killing and torture and all the things that surrounded the Holocaust and the cramming in of people into a camp. She volunteers to be a social worker. She volunteers to be a blessing to those that are in need during a time of corporate isolation. So she's the, the Germans are, the Nazi party are producing this external corporate isolation of the Jewish people. And Etty is operating in what can only be described as a luminary in this uh, environment. She really excels in her ability to love others. And it's all down to this internalized relationship she has with God. I'll just read you one of her quotes. She says this, There really is a well deep inside of me, and in it dwells God. Sometimes I am there too, but more often stones and grit block the well, and God is buried beneath then he must be dug out again. I just love this quote and I want to close as we meditate and think about this quote. She says, there is a well that is God himself inside of me. But then she says, sometimes I am there too. Sometimes she wasn't present to the very divine presence that was in her. And it was at those times she said, God needs to be dug out. Just imagine removing rubble and needing to dig God out of ourselves and allow the divine light to shine forward. So in the midst of self-voluntary, in the midst of isolation and deprivation, in the midst of all of those restrictions being taken away, Etty Hillison is a shining light in a time of great darkness. I encourage you today to look up Etty Hillison. She joins uh, the greats who've gone before her in that great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on to fix our eyes upon Jesus. God bless you as you think about the life of Etty Hillison. <laughs>